So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and in this video today I wanted to talk about the 2022 iPad Pro and what to expect with it. Now I know that this M1 iPad Pro has only been around for about six months now at this point and it's been an amazing device. I absolutely love it. But again, that doesn't stop all the rumor mills, all the leaks that come out and everybody knows that Apple is five years ahead. They probably know what every single product is gonna look like, how it's gonna function five years in advance and that's kind of what makes Apple so great and what makes them dominate market share at least in the US, especially in the tablet market. But without further ado, let's go over some of these leaks. Let's see what's gonna be reality, what's gonna be kind of like faux and not really gonna happen, and whether or not you should upgrade or buy an M1 iPad Pro right now. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that I personally think is gonna happen, and according to Mark Gurman from Bloomberg, it looks like the mini LED display that we only got with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro will be coming down to that 11 inch iPad Pro. So this year in May, we did get a price hike on the higher end iPad Pro. The 12.9 inch went from 999 or $1,000 up to $1,100. And the only reason that happened is because of this new mini LED technology and the fact that it probably cost them a little bit more to make it so they didn't want their margins to get ruined, so they added $100. But at the same time, they kept that same LCD liquid retina display on the 11 inch iPad Pro, which again, was an amazing display, but if you hold those two displays, a mini LED versus a non-mini LED, but if you hold those two displays side by side, so that mini LED and the non-mini LED, then you're gonna see a little bit of a difference. The blacks are much darker, the screen gets much brighter, the color's a little bit crisper, but if you don't have them side by side, then the upgrade really probably isn't worth it. it but again, that's what's gonna be coming to the 11 inch iPad Pro. But with that, we're probably gonna get a brand new screen on the actual 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And the rumors about this screen is that it's going to be an LTPO OLED display, which will also bring, again, even richer blacks, crisper brightness, you know, crisper colors overall. But again, if you hold them side by side, I doubt that it's gonna be a crazy upgrade. It's gonna be the same exact upgrade that we saw from, you know, last year's iPad models to this year's. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to justify a purchase like that. But again, I'm all for OLED coming to the iPad Pro because they never actually, they've never brought OLED to the iPad Pro. And the main reason they haven't brought it over the iPad Pro is because of cost constraints and probably manufacturing constraints. It's a lot more expensive to manufacture, especially in bulk and put these displays on the iPad Pro. But one of the standout features about this new OLED display is that the refresh rate or the variable refresh rate that iPads Pro experience Right now it goes from 24 to 120 hertz. So the minimum hertz, or hertz, I didn't even know what the word would be, but the minimum amount of hertz that the iPad is gonna be putting out is 24 FPS. Versus if we go OLED, we can actually drop that down all the way to 10 FPS. And the reason that makes a difference is because when you're doing stuff on a static screen, meaning it's not moving, it's not dynamic, let's say you're reading an article, you're not really scrolling through anything, you're reading an ebook on your iPad Pro, that means it can drop all the way down to 10 hertz or 10 FPS and stop that battery drainage from happening, let's say at 24 FPS, because there's no real reason for you to be at 24 FPS when you're reading a book or just reading text, you know, looking at pictures. There's no real reason for that because it's a still static image. What would be most impressive is if they can go all the way down to like one FPS, like the Apple Watches. I think the Series 6 was the first one to be able to do that. I could be wrong, but again, that is gonna be kind of the biggest pro when it comes to this OLED display, is just the fact that we get a wider gamut when it comes to that refresh or that variable refresh rate. Another rumor that's actually coming out of Ming-Chi Kuo is we're actually gonna see a design change. Not a physical design change, but what the material is gonna be made out of. So right now, all the iPads are made out of aluminum. They're beautiful, they're amazing. And then you have the main screen made out of glass. Right now, what the rumor is, is that they're actually gonna replace the back of the iPad. So they're gonna get rid of the aluminum and they're gonna go with like a matte finished glass on the back, on the rear. So it's gonna look very similar to the iPhone 11, iPhone 12, iPhone 13 or the Pro models, you guys saw that that was the first time that Apple implemented this like non-fingerprinty kind of matte frosted finish on the glass back of the iPhones. And they're supposedly bringing that over. And the reason they're bringing that over is gonna be for wireless charging. So the idea is to have MagSafe on there, to have regular wireless charging, but then on top of that, also reverse wireless charging. And I think this is actually a good move for Apple to start with the iPad Pros, as opposed to just putting it to the masses on everybody with the iPhones. And the reason is because A, the battery is way bigger on the iPad Pro. Right now the batteries on the iPhones are much, much smaller. I think they're about 4,000 milliamp hours versus on the iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch, you're dealing with like 10,000 milliamp hours. So that's twice or 2.5 times as big. So that gives you a little bit more room to wirelessly charge other devices without draining the main battery of the device that quickly, which will probably be one of the things that people notice if they start reverse wireless charging on the iPhones. 
that their iPhone battery is gonna deteriorate much faster than an iPad Pro's battery. And the second main reason why I think this could happen, especially on the iPad Pros versus the iPhones, is because there's just less out there on the market. So less iPad Pros means less errors, means less bugs. Right now, if they threw that out to every iPhone out there or every new iPhone out there, there's gonna be millions and millions and millions of people trying this new feature out, which could backfire on them if they don't implement it correctly. So if they do it just on the iPad Pros, they're gonna have fewer instances of things not working the way they're supposed to, and then they can kind of just bug fix, fix it over there, perfect it on the iPad Pro, and then slowly bring it over to the iPhone, which again, this is exactly what they did with ProMotion. ProMotion has been around on the iPad Pro since 2017, and it took them until 2021 to feel comfortable enough to bring that over to the iPhone Pros, and again, not even the regular 13s have it, only the iPhone 13 Pros have it. So even though I'm mentioning these new changes, from a physical standpoint, it's not gonna look any different. The iPad is still gonna look the same, it's still gonna have that you know uniform bezel around, it's still gonna have Face ID, it's still gonna probably look like aluminum on the, on the rear, but it's gonna just be a different finish, but it's gonna be made out of glass. And then we're still gonna have probably the same exact cameras, the same 12, 12 megapixel shooters, the ultra wide and the regular wide. And then we're still gonna have the LiDAR scanner. I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. It's staying on the iPhone 13s. It'll probably stay on the iPad Pros. And then lastly, what we gotta talk about is what chipset is gonna be put on these iPad Pros. This year, Apple put the M1 chips on the iPad Pro and everybody and their mother was like, oh my God, we're gonna get Mac OS. Oh my God, we're gonna get, you know, pro level applications like Final Cut Pro and a real Photoshop and all these other things. And lo and behold, it's six months later and we still don't have any of that. For me, I knew that wasn't gonna happen. Like I was a big believer of Mac OS is never gonna come to the iPad. You know, maybe iPad OS will get some upgrades that'll make it feel more like Mac OS, but for right now, I never thought that Mac OS was gonna come to the iPad Pro. And we still don't even have universal control, which is something that was promised to us with iPad OS 15 and the new Mac OS Monterey. So again, right now we're dealing with an iPad that is just very overpowered for what it can do with iPad OS. You know, it's still, you can still have pro level applications like LumaFusion, Affinity Photo, and it runs amazingly on the current iPad Pro, but it also ran amazingly on even the A12X 2018 iPad Pro. It was still fully functional and worked perfectly. So there are some rumors speculating that Apple is gonna throw in the M1 Pro or the M1 Max into the iPad Pro, but in my opinion, there, there isn't enough of a return in real life application to put those chips in there and maybe even price hike these iPad Pros. There's already so much headroom with these M1 chips inside of the iPad Pro that it doesn't make sense to throw in an M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM into an iPad Pro. It just really doesn't. Like, yes, it'll be amazing when it comes to pure horsepower and like raw Geekbench scores. It'll be freaking amazing. It'll blow anything out of the water. But what is that gonna do for you in real life with real life applications and real life productivity? Probably nothing than what you're currently doing right now, right? Right now, if you have an M1 iPad Pro or a 2020 iPad Pro, you're probably still flying through everything that you do. So what I think Apple might do is it might actually announce their M2 chip. I think they might put the M2 chip, announce it alongside the iPad Pro, put it into the iPad Pro, and have kind of the same focus and release idea as they did with the A14 and the A15. So the A14 first came to the iPad Air 4, and it was technically the newest chip that Apple created, and it was in the iPad Air. And then this year, they threw the A15 into the iPad mini. So I think Apple's gonna focus a lot more on single core tasks. They're not gonna really worry about GPU performance because the M1 chip already has great GPU performance. So the M2 chip, they're just gonna put it in there as a kind of step up on the M1 side, not on the M1 Max and Pro side. So they're not gonna focus on GPU power because it already has enough. They're probably gonna focus on RAM management and making sure that single task applications are working as efficient as possible. So I think that's what's gonna happen when it comes from a chipset standpoint. Because again, throwing a 64 gigabyte RAM chip into this M1 iPad Pro just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. There's there's only so much you can do pushing this iPad Pro. And right now, iPad OS, even though it is good, even though you can run you know your businesses from it and treat it like a computer, there's just, you know, there's a limitation and that's where your diminishing returns start to really hit in where it's like, you're already at a peak in terms of speed and performance and efficiency. Spending another, let's say $200 for an M1 Max chip is gonna give you very little if like no real return on your money when it comes to real life performance. I mean, if you wanna show off some Geekbench scores, by all means, take that screenshot and put it on Twitter with an M1 Max iPad Pro, but that's not gonna translate into anything serious. That is pretty much what we have. So we have the reverse wireless charging, probably some new displays, maybe an introduction of that M2 chip, and then kind of go from there. And then I'm hoping iPadOS 16 really wows us. And who knows, maybe I could be wrong. Maybe Apple will do something with iPadOS 16 that will justify having an M1 Pro and an M1 Max. And at that point, I am hope that I'm wrong and they do go with that route. Give me more software implementation and software kind of efficiencies, then give me the more hardware power to run that software. Not the other way around, not the other way around. 
But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Leave some comments below what you guys think. I'm always up for a discussion down in the, in the comments below. I'm really curious to know what Apple does with these iPad Pros, how they're gonna keep iterating on them, like how they're gonna make them better. Because again, they don't really have competition. So they can kind of just sit on their laurels and do whatever they want with the iPad Pros for the next like five years before any, anything else kind of comes up and tries to compete with them. That's just my opinion. So hopefully they don't get too comfortable and hopefully they don't take advantage of all the customers saying like, oh, let me just throw you a recycled M1 iPad Pro for next year and call it the M2 iPad Pro. I hope they do something a little bit different. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, leave some comments down below. Check out channel sponsor Paperlike. And until next time. Let me know if you guys like these kind of leak videos because I had a lot of fun researching them.